Welcome, folks, to another belter of an episode of F1 Motor Fever podcast. Today, we're going full pelt into the heart-pounding universe of Formula One, spinning a yarn of ambition, speed, and the relentless chase for glory. Stick around as we delve into the iconic 2002 Australian Grand Prix, the Minotti teen's journey, and the evolution of Formula One. I'm your host, Mon Clark, and with me is my ever-alert sidekick, Yasmin Her. We also have a special guest amongst us, Williams, top draw expert and aficionado of Formula One racing. Welcome, Williams. Thanks for having me, Mon Clark and Yasmin Her. I'm chuffed to be here. We're over the moon to have you, Williams. Let's get stuck in with the iconic 2002 Australian Grand Prix. Can you give us a taste of this milestone event, Williams? Absolutely, Mon Clark. The 2002 Australian Grand Prix was a turning point for the Minotti team. The anticipation was electric, and Melbourne gave the team a warm welcome. But, here's a fun fact, their journey to Australia was a spectacle in itself, they flew in a 747. You're having a laugh. They actually flew in a 747 to the race. Yes, Yasmin her. And the excitement didn't stop there. Despite the rain and the looming 107% rule, they secured both drivers in the race. Hold on, what's the 107% rule, uncle? Good on you, Christina, always keeping us on our toes. In Formula One, the 107% rule states that a driver must set a time within 107% of the pole position's time to qualify for the race. Isn't that right, Williams? Spot on, Mon Clark. It was a real nail-biter. But the drama didn't end there. Despite a terminal differential problem early on, Mark Webber crossed the finish line in fifth place. Now, that's a cracking story. I bet the celebrations after that were mental. Indeed, Yasmin her. It was pure joy, a celebration that even spilled over into the Ferrari garage with Michael Schumacher himself. That's smashing. Speaking of celebrations, here's a quick bit of trivia. Did you know that this event had a unique moment of having two podiums due to the overwhelming support of the crowd? Fascinating, isn't it? Spot on. Now, moving on, Williams, could you tell us about Paul Stoddart's journey to owning Minotti? Certainly, Yasmin her. It all kicked off with an unexpected phone call from Flavio Briator and a snap decision to buy the team. Running a small-budget team in Formula One was a tough old game, but Stoddart was relentless in his pursuit of success. Oi, did you guys hear that Stoddart actually wanted to name the team Marsupials? How about that for a porky? Ha <laughs> ha, Brown, you certainly had me there. But let's stick to the facts, shall we? All right, folks, let's get back on track. Williams, I believe Stoddart had a great admiration for drivers Mark Webber and Fernando Alonso, didn't he? Indeed, Mon Clark. He recognized their talent and dedication, and even noted similarities between Weber and young Max Verstappen. And, the sale of Minotti to Red Bull in 2005. That must have been a tough decision, right, Williams? Yes, Yasmin her, but Stoddart had respect for Red Bull and Dietrich Maitzjitz for honoring their commitments and safeguarding the staff in Fianza. Sorry for interrupting but I heard a rumor that Minotti was actually sold for just a single quid. Is that true, Williams? Ha <laughs> ha, Smith, that's a popular myth, but it's not entirely accurate. The sale was more complex and involved various commitments and responsibilities. Blimey, this is turning into quite a heated discussion. But let's circle back to our main topic. Williams, can you share your thoughts on the current state of Formula One? Of course, Mon Clark. It's worth praising the racing and the introduction of cost caps. The profitability of teams and the thrill of seeing underdogs win races has added a new dynamic to the sport. By the beard of St. John. That's some deep insight, Williams. Thanks for taking us on this thrilling ride through the world of Formula One. Absolutely, Williams. We appreciate you joining us on F1 Motor Fever podcast and enlightening us about the high-speed world of Formula One. It was my pleasure, Mon Clark and Yasmin her. Thanks for having me. And that's a wrap, folks. 
we hope you enjoyed this episode of F1 Motor Fever podcast. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share our podcast with other Formula One enthusiasts. Until next time, keep your engines revving.